could continue climbing this week. We are taking an in-depth look at the impact on housing and whether people even want to stay in mm. Denver because of the rising prices. Well, Aurora is adding to its housing stock the thousands of units coming to cities as the metro area tries to alleviate a housing crunch. And we've seen fire and floods. Now we'll have a look at the impact of extreme heat on natural disasters really worldwide, mm. certainly from yeah. coast to coast here in the U.S. As we take a live look over downtown Denver this morning, uh, a little bit drier, but maybe still some some water out there from the rain we saw over the weekend. Yeah, it was very damp this mm -hmm. morning when I drove in. Uh, still some areas of standing water here across town, but this morning we've dried out quickly in Denver. We are still picking up a little bit of moisture over the southeastern plains, but that heavy rain and that line of storms moving far off to our east through Nebraska, Kansas, and moving into Kansas City at this hour. 66 degrees right now, both downtown and out to the airport, low to mid 60s up north and east and into the mountains. A pretty mild and beautiful start to our morning with 50s from Leadville up through Steamboat. Here's a look at your hourly planner for the metro area. It will be warmer this afternoon. Yesterday we saw highs only in the low to mid 80s. Today we'll get there right around lunchtime and top out with a high of 90 out at DIA. Low 90s into Fort Collins and Greeley. A dry afternoon for northern Colorado and over the plains. But down south we will be seeing a few isolated storms into our central and southern mountains. The risk of flash flooding is lesser today, especially over burn scarred areas that really saw some heavy rain yesterday. This afternoon afternoon though it's going to be mainly south of Keystone into Fairplay. Evergreen could see an isolated storm same over the Palmer Divide but a better possibility tomorrow. Michael will be talking more about storm activity pretty much all week long. Oh man well we could certainly use that rain Katie. I want to start up in Adams County where we've been keeping an eye on a crash on I-76 and uh, this is at I-76 in between 74th Avenue and I-270. I've been talking about it for a while now. It is not cleared off the map. However, it looks like our backups aren't so bad at this hour. This is impacting westbound lanes, so keep that in mind on your morning commute. A little bit further to the south, I-225 Parker Road, we have a crash impacting southbound lanes. And uh, take a look at that drive time. Southbound I-225 from Parker Road to I-25, 18 minutes running in the red. Let's go ahead and pull up the CDOT camera in the area. Traffic is flowing. It's just going very slowly. So. Another problem spot there for us to keep in mind this morning. We'll go back to the map, take a look at one more drive time for you. Northbound I-225 from I-25 to I-70, 11 minutes. Quite a slowdown though, again. Southbound I-225 from I-70 to I-25, 24 minutes at this hour. Well, we have some breaking news from overnight. Englewood police shot and killed a 22-year-old man. Officers say he shot at them first. This is video from the scene on South Grove Street off of West Bellwood Drive. Police were responding to a disturbance call at a home. No officers were hurt. The officers involved are on administrative leave during the investigation. Crows are working to get things uh, back up and running at DIA after a ground stop last night because of that rain. More than 800 flights were delayed Sunday. Uh, there are still a few issues this morning with DIA reporting nearly 100 delays and nearly three dozen cancellations. Well, new this morning, Colorado's hot housing market is now driving people away. Now, we could also see another interest rate hike this week, which could make things like housing even more expensive. So we're taking a 360 in-depth look at the state of the housing market. First off, the Fed's two-day meeting starts tomorrow and will likely end with another rate hike. Analysts expect three quarters of a percentage increase, which would be the same as June when the Fed ordered the largest rate hike since 1994. This is all to tame inflation, which is now at more than 9%. There are some fears these increases in rates will push our country into a recession. Over the weekend, though, Treasury Secretary Janet Yellen downplayed that, saying our strong jobs market and other factors will soften the blow. Consumer spending yeah. remains solid. Um, it's continuing to grow. Um, output, industrial output has grown in uh, five of the six la uh, most recent months. Um, credit quality remains very strong. Household balance sheets are generally in good shape. But inflation is way too high. We are also seeing the impact because last week the number of people applying for mortgages dropped hitting its lowest point since 2000. And you can blame the higher interest rates, which stand around 5.8%. Nationally, home sales fell for the fifth month in a row. 
So the average monthly mortgage payment in the Denver metro area is twenty nine hundred dollars. Mm. That does not include taxes or insurance added on top of that. So maybe it doesn't surprise you that more people now are leaving Denver to find a more affordable place to mm. live. Redfin has ranked Denver eighth in a list of cities where home buyers are moving away from. And here's where they want to go. Uh, Miami tops this list. Uh, Tampa also in Florida's second, followed by Phoenix, Sacramento, Las Vegas. You see some cities in Texas on that list that are more affordable than Denver. Even a not so affordable city like San Diego yeah. uh, still made the list of destinations. Apparently, uh, experts think some Americans are just craving warmer weather. Mm -hmm. Yeah, trading mm. in the skis for the surfboard, I yeah. guess. Well, we can't control the weather, but some cities are considering incentives to get people to stay or at least get them into more stable housing. Boulder County is offering landlords a bonus of $2,500 for offering space to the homeless. Fort Collins is also asking people to take a survey about housing this week. It asks about creating a rental license program and expanding the current occupancy limits. Denver is also considering a plan to give people in shelters $1,000 a month to help them find stable housing. And those housing solutions are needed more than ever. The homeless population in the Denver Metro has increased nearly 13% in two years. Uh, that's according to the point in time count taken back in January, which included both the people staying in shelters and on the streets. More than 6,000 people were counted as homeless, an increase of nearly 800 since the last point in time count, which happened before the pandemic. The number of people sleeping outdoors also increased by more than 32%. So across the metro, we see new developments popping up all the time because we can't build new homes fast enough. Here's a look at some of the projects in the works for Aurora out near the airport. Denver 7's Christian Lopez joins us live from there with a preview of these thousands of homes coming online soon and what that means for us. Yeah, there are several residential and commercial projects in the works right now. We're just a few blocks away from E-470 and we can see some of that construction in the area. Last year, the city of Aurora issued building permits for $1.9 billion for these new construction permits. And at last check in May, just a couple of months ago, $624 million have already been spent on them. City officials say this is a great place to live and work, so they're excited for these new developments. Throughout the pandemic, we have seen very strong development activity across the city. And so that is both in um, you know, new areas of the city where we haven't had uh, development before. So a lot of that's out uh, in the area um, south of the airport, uh, between I-70 and the airport, we have a couple of large uh, master plan communities going on out there. That includes uh, Painted Prairie, which is the uh, one square mile uh, just south of the Gaylord out there. He just mentioned one of those projects painted Prairie and here are the details from the city. It is a planned community that will have 4200 units. So far 10% of those are already built. There's also Aurora Highlands 360 units for that one are under construction with more than 12,000 units planned. And there's also High Point. 2,700 units planned for that one. So far, 700 are built. That is just three of 14 planned development projects that are a mixture of retail, commercial, and residential. Live this morning, I'm Christian Lopez, Denver 7. All right, thanks, Christian. And while home prices continue to climb, we are seeing some relief at the gas pump. Those prices are starting to fall at a faster pace now. AAA reports Colorado's average is sitting at 462 a gallon, which is down 16 cents since last week. I can smell it first, always, and then I hear it. Flash flood concerns are top of mind for high country communities. The new reality for people living in the shadow of recent wildfires. And meet the Colorado athlete who doesn't let cerebral palsy slow him down. Not even a little. He is fast and on his way to the record books.